Hello everyone, welcome. Today we are going to discuss a recent paper called Super Speech Processing Universal Performance Benchmark. And this paper was released uh, I think in May and the authors are from uh, many universities and industries. This paper is a collaboration between four universities, MIT, JHU, uh, National Taiwan Universities, University and, uh, and CMU. The companies include Facebook AI Research and Amazon AI. The overview is as follows. First, we will look at the introduction of the paper. Then we will see the speech processing universal performance benchmark idea. Then we will see the framework and finally we will see some experiments and results. If you are working in a uh, machine learning field, um, uh, by now you may be aware of self-supervised learning which is uh, basically uh, something similar to unsupervised learning. So the idea is very simple, given unlabeled audio data or video data or text data, you can learn some uh, hidden representations which are going to be useful for downstream applications. And those hidden representations will have some rich information about the particular domain, for example, in speech, the the uh, hidden representations will have uh, information about the uh, gender identity or the phonemes or, uh, or the emotion of the audio. And similarly, NLP and computer vision. This paper, um, like for example, in case of uh, when, when a paper like BERT and GPT-2 came out, so they showed uh, learning these or training these large self-supervised pre-trained models a large amount of unlabeled text data, you can obtain uh, pretty strong, uh, 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 pretty strong pre-trained model which can be fine-tuned for downstream applications. And they also showed in the in those papers, they also showed that uh, they they took they took many uh, downstream tasks in NLP, and they showed the performance of those pre-trained models or self-supervised pre-trained model on uh, on the on those uh, downstream applications. No such thing uh, exists as of now for speech. I mean, uh, when I say no such thing, there are a lot of pre-trained models, self supervised pre-trained model, but there is no paper which shows, okay, given this pre-trained model, we can uh, fine tune this pre-trained model for all the speech related downstream tasks, such as emotion recognition, speech recognition, speaker ID, uh, speaker verification, keyword spotting and all, and so on. So because there are so many, um, speech or uh, there are so many speech applications right so, so when, 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 we, when we say speech it's not just speech recognition there are so many other tasks related to speech in speech field like the ones i mentioned so this paper clearly uh, shows uh, uh, how uh, these pre-trained models can be fine-tuned for all the all those downstream tasks and uh, what is the performance of these self-supervised models, they do not only show one, but they take all the existing uh, or all the available proposed uh, self-supervised training approaches and they tune uh, those models for these downstream applications and they show which is good and which performs better and so on. So uh, that's why it's kind of a benchmark or binge, it's, it, this paper is about uh, benchmarking some of the speech processing uh, applications. So, uh, so as I said, they use uh, lots of or uh, multiple uh, um, pre-trained models, and they tune it for many uh, speech applications, and uh, and uh, uh, we, we will see the results and so on in the coming slide. And the and they have also released a toolkit where they have released their uh, codes, which we can which you can uh, use and uh, play with it. So now let's look at uh, this uh, benchmarking. So basically, um, so they have uh, divided uh, the data sets into four parts or four uh, sections. So content, speaker, semantics, and paralinguistics. Paralinguistics are uh, such a, uh, are uh, speech applications such as uh, emotion recognition, gender identification, and so on. Semantics include intent, intent, intent uh, detection um, or, or uh, slot filling. Speaker include uh, speaker identification, speaker verification, 
and etc or speaker diarization rization content include uh, phoneme recognition speech recognition and uh, uh, query based uh, or uh, keyword keyword spotting query by example spoken term detection so we'll see all these um, examples in detail and we'll see uh, what are the data sets used for each of those each of those tasks and um, what are the models used so models are the pretrained model but they are not just tuning the pretrained model or they are not just adding one linear layer on top of the linear uh, pretrained model they are uh, they are the there are some changes in the in those in the in the model section we will discuss those so coming to the content uh, as i said in content um, you have phoneme recognition automatic speech recognition keyword spotting and query by example spoken term detection for phoneme recognition they are using uh, libri speech data set uh, they are using 100 hours of training data and uh, uh, dev clean and uh, test clean subsets for the validation and testing respectively and for automatic speech recognition they use uh, the same data set uh, but note that in case of phoneme recognition the metric they are going to use is the phoneme error rate right so uh, per Uh, whereas in case of automatic speech recognition the metric they are going to use for evaluation is word error rate uh, and they also do they also add a language model on top of the speech recognition model uh, while reporting the results uh, keyword spotting is um, i think many people will be maybe knowing about this so the idea of keyword spotting is given a particular audio segment or a small audio clip you have to classify that audio clip into one of the one of the 10 for example uh, keywords in your, for example if your vocabulary or if your number of classes is 10 you have to classify into one of the 10 um, keywords right so uh, there is a specific data sets uh, there are data sets uh, uh, most famous ones are speech command uh, v1 and v2 v1 will have 12 classes and v2 has i think 36 classes so uh, for every class they have um, thousands of audio clips which are basically uh, people basically those clips are uh, people speaking that particular uh, word right so imagine that as this has a kind of a word level word classification given audio you are classifying to one particular word but this is a classification problem not recognition problem so that is uh, keyword spotting and query by example uh, spoken term detection is uh, uh, something like uh, given a query uh, for example let's say uh, donald trump or let's just say trump this is one audio clip will give you and i am going to give it to you a database which has uh, thousands and thousands of hours of audio data your job is to detect audio clips or audio sentences where this word is spoken uh, so this is called spoken term detection very well known problem uh, people uh, i mean uh, people uh, the standard technique people use for this kind of or uh, this application is the dynamic time warping and uh, there are other cnn based uh, feature extraction layers which are going to be going to go as input to the uh, the dynamic time warping anyway so uh, we will see how the this problem is formulated here so uh, that is another uh, example of the content section now let's jump into the speaker section uh, here uh, they are taking three problems uh, speaker identification which is basically given a audio clip you have to classify into one of the 100 or 1000 um, speakers right Uh, so uh, so basically this is a classification problem right and there is a data set called voxel lab 1 there is a voxel voxel lab 2 also but they are using voxel lab 1 it's a pretty huge data set speaker verification on the other hand is um, kind of a, a verification problem we are given a uh, audio clip you have to match that audio clip into uh, the uh, the uh, query uh, clip for example let's say uh, um, i give them uh, uh, let's say there's a speaker verification system i go and speak to the system and uh, i'm just asking it for the verify verification basically I, it knows that i have to speak and if i speak it will just compare it with the one uh, clip which i which i which is there in the database which is my clip itself uh, if there is a match obviously it will be match because i am the one speaking and then it's going to say uh, okay accepted else it say rejected right that's a speaker verification problem so standard uh, verification uh, uh, problem right 
Speaker diarization on the other hand is um, uh, and just forgot to mention uh, for speaker verification also you are using the same data set and for speaker diarization the speaker diarization problem is uh, who spoke when problem like even a long audio uh, and there will be multiple speakers within it and you have to segment where uh, one person is speaking and where the other person is speaking so basically it's a segmentation problem right and they use library mix data which is basically mixing different speakers audio clip into a long audio and then asking the model to segment right so that's a speaker derivation problem coming to the semantics uh, there is intent classification which is basically uh, given audio you have to classify into one of the uh, 10 or one of the intent uh, in the list so this is again a classification problem slot filling is again uh, predicting uh, predicting the slot type uh, from an utterance and uh, for uh, intent classification they use flu fluent speech command data set and for slot filling they use audio snips data set finally uh, paralinguistic which is uh, emotion classification um, uh, and the famous data set for emotion classification at least in speech is called imocap and they are uh, going to report all the results on imocap and they use uh, accuracy metric um, uh, for reporting the results they could have used other um, problems as well like for example gender identification and few others but i think it should be fine now coming to the framework uh, so uh, the idea is very simple um, let's say there are uh, many uh, self supervised pre-trained models right open sourced and uh, or they can train it on their own because there are there are so many authors in this in this paper and most of them have already published one of these uh, uh, one of these uh, uh, self-supervised uh, models they are they, they because if you, if you look at the author's name like many of them are are uh, the authors of one of the one of the self-supervised uh, paper or self-supervised pre-training papers so so uh, so the idea is to use those models and then uh, tune these models or tune each model for all these applications or all these tasks and reporting results on them right and you do it for all the models available and you say and you uh, report the results of which model is good or which model is the best for these applications so uh, there are three different types of uh, self supervised pre models uh, there is a generative model there is discriminative model and there is multitask learning model so generative models are basically um, something like uh, APC, NPC, uh, APC is the autoregressive predictive coding which basically uh, generates the future frames given uh, the past frames right uh, and um, NPC is, is again similar idea uh, and, uh, and uh, uh, so, there, there, uh, so there is something called uh, Terra uh, which is also another paper Mockingj so uh, sorry not Mockingj, Mockingj is not a generative model so APC and NPC, I'm going to show you the list anyway in the coming slide. Um, there I can I can point you to which one are the uh, which one are the generative models, which one are discriminative model. Discriminative models are something like CPC based models like wave to wave Hubert and uh, Wiki wave to wave CPC uh, so on. Multitask learning is there is only uh, I think one paper. It's called Face uh, Problem Agnostics uh, Speech Represent Speech Encoder, uh, which is basically given audio you. Uh, you uh, learn uh, or train the model to predict uh, uh, predict multiple features or characteristics of the of the input data for example given a speech clip the model has to predict the mfcc feature pitch features and uh, many other other features so that is the face encoder or problem agnostic speech encoder which is also another type of self supervised model uh, I think it's from Mila Lab, uh, Mirko Ravanelli and the other uh, guys. I think Santiago from uh, from uh, Dolby Research. So, so uh, that is another one. So, these three are the main categories, and for each category, there are many um, pre-trained models for, uh, proposed uh, in the past, uh, and uh, they are going to try all those models and on all these tasks and report the results. Uh, like I said, uh, tuning is not just adding a linear layer on top of the uh, pre-trained model and then uh, uh, training the model to do that particular task. Uh, for for uh, for uh, phoneme recognition, keyword spotting, 
speaker id intent classification and emotion recognition that is the case they're just going to add one linear layer on top of this pre-trained model and they ask uh, or they train only that linear layer and uh, uh, the, the model will do the model will uh, so the basically the input to that model or input uh, to that linear layer is the representation from this pre-trained model and the pre-trained models are kept fixed they are not trained they are frozen over the entire training right so that is that is the that is one uh, one uh, one uh, uh, i mean that's a linear layer for all these tasks for example for asr since the data set is large they are using they are going to use uh, two layer by lstm and uh, each each uh, layer will have 1024 units and ctc uh, for training right for that is for the asr task for query based uh, um, uh, 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 the uh, the spoken term detection problem uh, they are going to use dynamic time warping but instead of using posteriorgram from the speech data they are going to use the output from these pre-trained models large pre-trained models so because those representations will be uh, will have more rich information compared to a low level feature representations uh, representation such as uh, filter bank energy or mfcc right and uh, once you have the dynamic time warping you can just get the um, Viterbi path and then uh, find the score and based on the score you say whether the particular keyword is exist exist in that particular audio clip or not right so that is a, that is the qbe and uh, asv uh, for uh, uh, automatic spe speaker verification they are going to use x vector architecture but instead of feeding MFCC or filter bank as input, they are going to feed the, the high level representations uh, from these pre-trained models. Same case with uh, speaker diarization, they use the expected features, but instead of using hierarchical agglomerative clustering, they are going to use permutation invariant training. Right? So these are the model types and these are this is the training framework. Now well, let's get into the now let's see the experimentation. So there is only one table for results and there is only one table for experimentation. So this is these are the models they are going to use uh, APC, which is basically the autoregressive predictive coding, which is the is a paper from uh, Jim Glass group. Um, uh, uh, similar to CPC, uh, in case of CPC, I mean CPC is kind of a, like I said, it's a, it's a, um, uh, I mean see, APC, uh, like I said, it is going to predict the future frame given. Um, the past frame in a say, auto regressive fashion so that's why it's called auto regressive predictive co coding right um, in case of vq uh, apc which is similar to apc but uh, they are going to add uh, vector quantization layer on top of uh, the uh, encoder uh, so that uh, 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 th that is just uh, that i think the idea just comes from uh, vqva um, and uh, npc as i said non auto non regressive predictive coding which is again uh, coming from Jim James class group and then mocking J and Terra uh, those are um, um, so these are one one group which is the generative modeling group and now uh, in case of um, discriminative modeling uh, you have modified CPC which is uh, a paper from Facebook and uh, they have wave to vec obviously uh, but it's not 2.0 it's an old wave to vec then they have VQ wave to vec which is wave to vec uh, but with uh, vector quantization uh, we have to work 2.0 is the recent paper the one of the one of the very well known or famous paper base which is trained on 1000 hours of audio data whereas in case of we have to work 2.0 large it's trained on 50000 hours of english um, unlabeled data which is vox vox uh, vox uh, uh, sorry librivox data hubert is again uh, an, another paper which is uh, which is uh, developed after uh, wave to 2.0 or wave to vec, uh, wave to 2.0 i think i have a tutorial for hubert as well in my youtube channel if you want you can check it out and there is base and there is hubert large uh, hubert is similar to wave to vec uh, but uh, it does some kind of a uh, refinement of the refinement of the uh, or it does it, it does k-means clustering on top of uh, the wave to vec representations and then it does refinement to learn um, discrete symbols such as phonemes uh, and that kind of improves the performance over uh, web trick so these are the models available um, i think they are not at uh, yeah, there is phase as i said is a phase is a multitask learning uh, framework which is basically uh, the model or the encoder just takes raw audio as input 
and just predicts the characteristics of that rod you such as pitch mfcc and there are other uh, other uh, features of that of that uh, particular audio waveform so that's why it's called uh, multitask learning uh, because the output is kind of multitasking on top of the encoder so that is the phase so and obviously by baseline is uh, fbank which is uh, just using uh, mfcc features or sorry uh, filter bank energy features which are just raw features uh, taken from uh, or extracted from those uh, audio clips and the networks are here like uh, as i said phase is a sync uh, uses sync net which is uh, which is kind of a uh, uh, 1d convolution uh, network which uh, operates on the raw audio and uh, seven layer convolution one layer of uh, quasi er and then and then uh, apc is a three layer gru uh, then uh, same thing with wiki wiki apc then npc is four layer convolution four layer mask convolution mocking j is 12 tra 12 layer transformer and then terra is three transformers uh, in case of modified cpc five convolution layer one lstm wave to vec old wave to vec which is 19 layer convolution pq wave to vec 20 layer convolution and these i think you already know same case right but as you can see number of parameters so obviously the wave to vec large has large lot of parameters same thing with hubert large and as you can see the, the, these models are very heavy i mean these are those are trained on a large amount of audio data and and they are like pretty large uh, large models uh okay don't worry about this trade um, input as you can see uh, for f bank input they are saying waveform but obviously they are just uh, just going to extract the filter bank energy or filter bank coefficients from the from the uh, waveform so for phase again waveform and for all these models they are all uh, f bank and for all the generative models sorry for all the discriminative models it's all waveform and for all the generative models it's 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 f bank obviously because you can't put generative models on top of the raw audio waveform because predicting each and every value of the waveform is crazy because in one second you'll have 16000 samples and if you have 10 second audio then forget it because you, you won't you won't get the long term dependency i mean you could use um, such a wave net and so on but i think it's quite complicated Anyway, uh, coming to the corpus, um, phase uses uh, Debris Speech 50R. I mean, this is this you can uh, check out later, but I think I already explained to you. Um, uh, pre training, uh, as I said, this is multitask. Uh, um, not sure about what this FG means, uh, but anyway, uh, I think VQ is quick quantization, but I, I don't so, I, I am not sure about. Okay, I think it's feature extractor and content uh, the context rep contextual uh, representation like feature learning and contextual representation probably, but anyway, and this is this is also kind of important if you, if you want to look at the implementations of all these models. So you can just go here and just use these models and clone their repo. And if you want to make changes, you want to try it on new data sets and so on, you can easily do it. Now, finally, coming to the result section. Now, uh, this is the final. Uh, this is the uh, uh, this is the table which we are looking for um, because uh, this is what going to tell us which models are better and which models are not so great. Now, let's first look at the F bank. So, as you can see, it's kind of uh, uh, for phoneme recognition is worse. I mean, eighty-two percent phoneme error rate is very bad. Um, Keyword spotting, they are just getting 8% accuracy, which is which is just random, which is kind of random, right? I mean, you have 10 classes and if you are getting 8%, this is just 1 divided by 100, which is just, sorry, uh, you're just getting like 10% in random uh, case scenarios itself, but this is the universe. Um, intent classification, same case, very bad accuracy, just 9%. SID, um, this is uh, speaker identification the uh, the accuracy is in uh, in uh, floating point numbers like in the fractions i think it's it's even bad so uh, er which is the emotion recognition 35 percent again random because um, emotion recognition has four classes one divided by four 25 percent okay not 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 so bad so it's better than uh, random uh, asr 23% word error rate which is good because I mean uh, with, uh, with language model it's even better because the architecture is big right so because they have LSTM 
uh, whereas here in this in this in this case they only have one linear layer which is uh, very less number of parameters uh, qbe and uh, uh, what is this is of asv is automatic speaker verification i think this should be si uh, sorry sf is slot filling sorry and uh, sd is the speaker diarization and uh, okay uh, that is the case for uh, f bank phase uh, if you look at the phase uh, uh, model here like phase plus which is the multitask learning paper i was telling about telling you about uh, that is kind of okayish uh, per not so uh, great good gets good uh, keyword spotting results um, 82 percent and improves again on uh, uh, intent classification but not so great just 29 percent and SID again not so great that 37 percent emotional recognition is very good and uh, ASR is worse than FBank as you can see here it's not so great for ASR uh, even though in their paper they claim uh, they are good uh, for ASR uh, not sure about ASR I think they test it on uh, phoneme recognition task and speaker recognition task but not sure about ASR task but in this case they are it's clearly showing FBank is FBank representations are better than the phase representations um, and uh, even in this case this for slot filling uh, for slot filling the um, uh, feature bank uh, sorry filter bank energies are better than phase representations uh, and uh, for ASV again same case for speaker recognition uh, speaker verification uh, the uh, phase is phase is not so great uh, compared to because the you want lower world error rate right so Phase representations are not so good compared to FBank, and uh, in case of speaker diarization, it's kind of better, right? And as you can see, uh, now let's just jump into the final results. As if, I mean, we'll just go to the bottom because, as you can see, the results are getting better and better when you go down uh, because you are going for the larger models, right? So, as you can see, um, for phoneme recognition, Hubert is best, for keyword spotting, we have to make large is best. For intent classification, Hubert is best. Hubert, 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 uh, Hubert base. And then again, Hubert, Hubert, Hubert. So overall, the best models are in this regime because they are large and they are trained on huge amount of data and they are their number of parameters in each models are large. I mean that's what I meant by large. So this is this is the situation right now. Like it mean always i mean as you know uh, it's not only in speech even in nlp and in computer vision same case like for example gpt1 there is gpt1 gpt2 and gpt3 gpt3 is obviously like billions of parameters 160 or 170 billion parameters and obviously that works way better than gpt2 or gpt3 or even bert right so that is the case i mean larger the model better the downstream task performance is and this is what is also being shown here and uh, some of the i mean some of the uh, good results which we saw here are these i think uh, in this in this section where sometimes phase representations for example here are not so great compared to f bank uh, and uh, uh, those are some of the good results or uh, those are some of the uh, 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 situations sometimes sometimes this happens i mean uh, sometimes the representations works really well for some tasks but may not work really well for other tasks right even here i mean we, we i mean the results are not consistent across uh, the models right even though hubert claims that they are uh, good for a uh, lot of the tasks or uh, good for speech recognition tasks for other tasks such as keyword spotting uh, we have to work works better and, uh, sometimes base works better for let's say for this application and for ASV base works better than Hubert Large, right? I mean, weird, right? Because the base is very uh, trained on small amount of data, whereas Large is trained on huge amount of data. But still, uh, base works sometimes better than the Large, right? I mean, this even even um, same kind of results I have also seen uh, in one of my paper which got accepted recently for Interspeech 2021. I saw base model was working better than uh, Large model for some of the uh, Indian languages speech recognition problem, right? So this happens sometimes so but there is no clear explanation as to why this is happening because you don't know or we nobody knows how these models are working and what's happening in, inside uh, nobody knows right because these are these these models are just uh, uh, they are just crunching 
huge amount of audio data and uh, we we don't know what 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 they are doing and what they are actually learning so that would be i think uh, in the next couple of years if people could understand uh, how these models are working and why they are so uh, why they are giving such a good performance or such a good uh, um, accuracies on all these uh, applications and if there is an explanation as to why they are working so well and if they can uh, understand these models very well it will be a uh, great uh, and it will be a breakthrough i guess so with that uh, i think we can uh, stop here i think this is the last slide uh, thank you so much for watching